Way, Silligurke hier auf dem gratis erreichbaren Server Lasergurkenland mit der IP 149.202.127.134 alternativ auch erreichbar unter der Domain sillyhuhn.com aber der Server heißt eigentlich Lasergurkenland und nicht Sillyhuhn. Ähm, genau. Ja, äh, mir ist gerade der ganze Server abgeschmiert, auf dem der Minecraft-Server läuft. Äh, deswegen muss ich hier nochmal kurz von der letzten Episode mein Rant an Microsoft zurücknehmen, obwohl der natürlich immer gerechtfertigt ist. Ähm, aber in dem Fall jetzt äh, habe ich vergessen, äh, ne, äh, für den Server zu zahlen und der ist gerade ausgegangen. Super professionell, das ist natürlich hier wieder sehr gut so sein Werbevideo zu starten. Kann man aus dem nichts machen, das kannst du mir nicht erzählen. Äh, sicher gibt es da irgendwas. Nur ich weiß das wieder nicht. Oh Mann, hey. Äh, ja. Lol. Oh. Nee. Ja, Blöcke daraus wären schön, aber da ja, machen wir den Scheiß wieder zu. Aber nee. Okay. Ja, genau, es geht dann in die Richtung weiter. Äh, ja, genau, aber ich habe jetzt wieder fett Guthaben da drauf geklatscht und naja, der Server war jetzt. Äh, also der Host-Server war jetzt vielleicht, keine Ahnung, äh, zwei. Naja, okay, 5 Minuten offline und die ganzen Gameserver, die da drauf laufen, waren dann vielleicht 10 Minuten offline, die <lacht> bis ich die letzten Server auch gestartet hatte und so weiter, bis alles wieder lief. Ähm, genau, sowas ist mir jetzt zum ersten Mal passiert in, ja okay, vielleicht zum dritten Mal in, äh, was weiß ich, 10 Jahre Hosting. Also, das ist, äh, das ist nicht die Regel und ähm, an sich wird dieser Server hier immer viel online bleiben. Ähm ja, genau. Soweit zu meiner Verteidigung. Ähm das ist ja immer noch ein Werbevideo hier, deswegen muss ich natürlich sagen, dass alles super toll ist. Aber naja. Sind wir mal ehrlich. Äh ist halt jetzt passiert, aber ist trotzdem alles super toll. Ähm ja, genau. Und äh, wir schauen immer noch den Full Ethical. Habe ich jetzt im letzten... Habe ich das richtig gecredit? Äh, keine Ahnung. Ich habe ja gerade schon ein Video hochgeladen. Ich weiß gerade gar nicht, welchen Link ich jetzt da reingepackt habe. Aber ähm, wir schauen wieder Full Ethical Hacking Kurs von dem Cyber Mentor an. Die 15 Stunden Compilation hochgeladen auf dem Free... Äh, was? Codecamp.org ja, freecodecamp.org Channel. Ähm, genau, sind wir gerade bei 8 Stunden und 8,5 Stunden. 33 Minuten. Genau, und äh, ja, dann geht es da weiter. It was fun meeting some of you guys. Awesome giving a talk. Awesome playing the CTF. So, really cool. And Rumham was there too. So, it was really cool, guys. Uh, other than that, You guys have asked for a magical, magical mug. I have put my ugly mug on an ugly mug. If I ever give out any more merch than this, please, it is a housekeeping. Housekeeping. Oh, okay. Hello to all the new people that have come in. I've seen quite a few of you come in. All right, so let's talk about some shells. We're going to be doing uh, two shell types, really, most commonly. There's a reverse shell, which is by far the most common, and we're going to demonstrate this with Netcat here in a second. If you've never used Netcat before, it is just basically a port listener or port connector, depending on what you make it do. Uh, And basically what you're doing, if you see this wonderful diagram that I stole here from Hacking Tutorials, you can see that we have a attack box. And this is the most common setup again. Uh, say an attacker IP is the 1.1. 
Now, all they're doing is they're setting up a listener on port 4444 with netcat, which is NC by default on Kali Linux. And the target machine is showing the netcat syntax, and that's fine, that's how we can actually connect. But all you have to do is think about some sort of exploit, which we're gonna learn about, or some sort of shell code like you learned about last uh, Monday when Rory was on and Rory was teaching us exploit development. That shell code that you saw, um, that will tell the, the machine when it's exploited to, hey, connect back to this port, to this IP address, and we're just sitting there listening. So that's kind of what a, a reverse shell is. Now, there's also something called a bind shell, right? So a bind shell is pretty much the opposite, and my PowerPoint presentation just died. That is awesome. Uh, one second. Okay, bind shell. So the bind shell is the opposite. We had a victim connect to the attacker. In a sense of a bind shell, we open up a malicious port on the target machine and then we connect to it directly. So it's a little bit different. And there are cases where you need one or the other. Typically a reverse shell is fine. But imagine that you are on a network um, say external pen testing and you need somebody to connect to you over the internet it would almost be easier if you could do a bind shell and connect to them because to get them to connect back to you you have to open up a port on your router do a port forward and send it to your attacking machine now if you do a bind shell you pretty much just connect to them directly not saying that you couldn't but uh, I couldn't do the reverse shell, but the bind shell is sometimes easier. Also, sometimes the reverse shell just doesn't work. Um, so we'll have to try a bind shell. So tonight, you're going to see an instance of where a shell doesn't work, and that actually is going to bring us into the talks of uh, stage versus non-staged payloads. So we have two types of payloads you're going to see. And one is non-staged, so basically that's going to send exploit shellcode all at once. There's no staging to it. It's a little bit larger in size and it doesn't always work because of that large size. Can't always get the payload across. Now if you see, and we're going to take a look at this later, you'll see it more in depth, but if you look at the uh, example over here, you see where it says Windows, it has the slash, and then it says Meterpreter underscore reverse underscore TCP. This is a reverse shell in Meterpreter, a uh, reverse TCP shell. If we look at staged, stage sends the payload in stages, so it's opposite, right? But it can be less stable because it's sending things over in stages. If we look at a stage payload, it looks a little bit different. Where there was an underscore over here, now there is a forward slash. So Windows forward slash interpreter forward slash reverse underscore TCP. So a little bit different there. Now, before we get into tonight's lesson, I am going to show you a brief example of our uh, our bind shell. So I'll show you how to use netcat, and we'll do a quick bind shell. Um, you might not be able to do this; you might just have to follow along. So let's play uh, let's play victim and let's play attacker. So on this, let's play this machine being the victim. Let me open a new window here. And the victim in a bind shell has been exploited. And let's just say that the shell code opened up a port on 4445. And when it, it's, a, uh, it's a Linux machine, so it opened up a bash terminal, or it's going to open up a bash terminal when somebody connects to it. Now I've got my fancy other bash terminal over here, right? My real pen <coughs> test machine. Let's open this one up. Let's just say, okay, I'm the attacker, I'm making a bind connection. Ja, so sagen, best All I need to do is reach out to that machine, which I think is on 129, we'll see, and try to connect over 4445. Nothing's happening visually, so let's take a look over here. Okay, so we did get a connection here. <laughs> And you see we connected to 129 from 128. It opened up this port. And let's see here. 
let's say if we say, who am I? There's actually a shell here, present working directory, we're in root, uh, host name, Kali. So this was an example of a bind connection. Now, what you need to pay attention to is the syntax. If you're connecting, all we need is netcat, the IP address, and the port we want to connect to. If you're listening, let's go back to my other machine, and this is typical listening, it's just netcat, pack, LVP, and then the port you want to listen on. So I use 4445. You see a lot of times like Metasploit's 4444. If you start getting trickier, you might use 443 or 80 to try to bypass filtering um, because by a lot of AVs block port 4444 or the uh, firewall will block it. So it's starting to become well known on that end. Uh, you will see this a lot when it comes to running exploits, when it comes to doing capture the flag. Uh, you don't see it as much in the pen testing realm unless you have to have it called back to you. Not saying I don't use it. Um, but you don't see it as much. You're going to see it way more when you're when you're dealing with like capture the flag stuff and uh, hack the box or OSCP. But very very important to know how to spin up a quick listener. All right. So today is going to be a continuation of last week. Let me go ahead and close this out. And last week had our scanning lesson. So we did a little bit of MF, we did a little bit of uh, Nessus, we talked about Nikto, we talked about some other tools, right? Uh, and what we found was there were some likely vulnerabilities. Uh, one of them was this Apache mod SSL, open SSL, it just, this line kept coming up over and over and over again, right? You see it down here. Uh, the local buffer overflow attack, you see a denial of service. Um, so that one just kept coming up. And we saw it when we Googled it that it was coming up, we searched for it, it kept coming up. Uh, the other one was a SMB type exploit. So today we're going to use Metasploit to exploit one of those, and then we're going to use, uh, we're going to do some downloading and compiling off the web to perform another exploit. So you're going to get to see how Metasploit works, and you're going to get to see how uh, it works for just downloading and compiling something like uh, off of ExploitDB or off of GitHub. So what we're not going to do today is we're not going to be working with any type of advanced shells. We're going to talk a little bit about payloads when we get into it again, because uh, one of our payloads is not going to work. But what we're going to save is we're going to save everything for when we get into the AD portion. That's going to be the, the meat of this course. So right now we're all methodology, a little bit of exploitation, uh, and then we're going to get into that exploitation next week, that post-exploitation. We're going to get into more advanced shells, and we're going to keep growing as we have been uh, the past few weeks. So let's start with one of these. Let's go ahead and just start with... Um, the more difficult, we'll save, we'll save the Metasploit one for last. So we found this Apache 1.3.20. Now the first thing I would do as a pen tester, and if I'm seeing all these things come up, I would go out to Google, and I would say, hey Google, uh, what's Apache 1.3.20 exploit? And you can see I've looked through some of these things. But I would look through it again. Uh, so this one, and we talked about this one last week, this open buck. So it's Apache mod SSL, and the mod SSL Oops. has to be less than 2.8.7. Richtig brain dead, hätte ich so vorbeilaufen können. Ja, das passiert, wenn man auf dem anderen Bildschirm schaut. And if we scroll in here, sometimes they give you instructions, like they tell you how to compile it. Um, and they don't tell you much about it. Sometimes they'll give you a little bit more info. So we would want to do some research on this to make sure this is exactly what we're going to be exploiting. Um, but if you come into here and you actually look a little closer, we just do a page find, 1.3.20. Um, looks like there's 12 matches. 
So it looks like the 1.3.20 of Apache is vulnerable. And we also know we're on Red Hat. So if we look at Red Hat, you can see that it's got two different versions of Red Hat 7.2 that it's running, uh, depending on the return address is what it looks like. And we'll either run number one or number two for that and try to exploit it. So somebody's already going ahead of me, Jeff. Uh, this exploit doesn't really work uh, that well. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use open luck instead of open fuck because we like to uh, have better grammar here. But if you scroll down, just four. The minus grammar? You see this helps in Wernick or Wernick. Echt? Uh, open luck. Funny. I've got it opened right here. And we're going to use this. Ich dachte, Grammar wäre Grammatik, ja wahrscheinlich auch, aber wahrscheinlich auch, äh, sag mal, wie heißt denn das auf Deutsch? Ähm, Wording. Gutes Deutsch. Das sieht doch recht groß aus. Haben wir hier eine Schmiede? Keo is short for Keoptrix. Okay, so we clone the uh -huh. open lock. Yes, I do have my OSCP. We, uh, we clone the open lock, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions on the page. So it says we got to clone it. we got to install this libssl dev. Go ahead and copy this. I've already got it, but we can try it again. You can see mine's up to date. I will, uh, I'll sit here and wait for you guys just for a second, just so you guys can get this installed, just in case you are following along, it might take a minute. A hey, Brute 505, are you from New Mexico? Is that where the 505 comes from? No, I can't get While I get the, the class oh, 30 seconds. Oh, just thing and, uh, Oh, well, never mind. Alright. So, once you have the libssl uh -huh. installed, we're going to compile. So we're going to use a compiler called GCC. We're going to grab the file we want to compile. I guess I should ls and show you what's in this folder, right? Uh, so let's cd to open lock, ls. Okay, so there's openfuck.c, and there's the readme. So what we're going to do is we're going to say GCC, we're going to say open fuck, we're going to do an attack of O, and we're just going to name it whatever we want. I'm just going to name it open to be easy. And then there was one more thing we had, one more instruction. It was a dash L crypto, so we got to type that in as well. Okay, so if we LS, you can see that in green, meaning we have executable permissions on open, is there. So we just do that forward slash open, and it gives us all of the readings here. So the syntax. Das open lock kommt mir auch bekannt vor. Ich glaube, ich habe das alles schon gesehen. Open. We're gonna say target. Wo das kam schon im Video vor, hat er auch irgendwie gesagt, ne? The port and a dash c. So. We don't have to declare the port, but we should declare, because we're not going to have to run it over SSL, that's fine. We don't know what C is. It says open end connections, use range 40 to 50. Okay, so we'll just use 40. Uh, the box is going to be the IP address, and then the target is going to be whatever offset this is in here. So remember, we were on 7.2 of Red Hat, and it was Apache 1.3.20. So what we have here, we have two options. We've got one or two. I'm going to cheat just a little bit and tell you that it's this guy, the 6B. So if we try 6A, it won't work. Then we would just move on to 6B. I'm just going to save us a step and save us some time. So to run the exploit, dot forward slash open, we're going to say 0x6B. We're going to use the IP address of the machine we're attacking for Keoptrix. 
and we're gonna do the dash T of 40. I'm gonna let that run. See if this gave us a shell back. It sure did. Okay. And we are root on Captrix level one. So we have just exploited this machine. Now from here, there's there's enumeration that I would do right off the bat. And I don't yeah, want to go into post exploitation because um, that's really gonna be saved for next week. But we should talk about at least a little bit about it, right? So there's some things here that we can do. Me personally, I can first few things I like to look at uh, are networking commands. And you say ARP A. ARP's not found. Okay. You say route. Route not found. So sudo dash L. We might not have a great shell here. Sudo works. So sudo dash L tells us who can run. Uh, the pseudo command, well, we're root right now, so we're going to run all the commands. But if you're yeah, doing like capture the flag type event, path or so. uh, this is really good information to know. <coughs> you might have some sort of tool or command that you can run as sudo that uh, you wouldn't expect. So we could upgrade this to bash. I'm not getting into all that. Yeah, but that's just the path, right? And then, so you would want to also see you know, what present working directory puts you into. Okay, it threw you into temp. Uh, can you move around? Can you navigate? Another one I'd look at would be netstat as a networking command. Again, we're going to talk about all this when we move into Windows. Uh, it'll be easier to give you the visual. Now, the crown jewels are the SE password. Uh, we could just cat that in the SE shadow, right? You say SE shadow. Okay, so there's some users on here. We've got root. We've got root's hash. We've got John and Harold as well. We've got John, their hashes. John the Ripper. So we would take this, we would extract the, uh, we extract this information, we would also extract the Etsy password file, and uh, we would combine those. We do something called unshadow, which basically combines both the files and would allow us to at least go into Hashcat or John or whatever and try to crack those. I've got a video on cracking that. We will cover this again at a later time. But if you want to cover it sooner or later, you don't know about this topic, you can go watch the video I have on my YouTube on cracking Hashcat, or Linux uh, hashes with Hashcat. So um, it's pretty straightforward, but this is one of the most important things to dump. Okay. Now, when we're using the ARP and we're using route and netstat, basically all I'm doing is looking for other network connections. Uh, it's possible that this is a dual home computer. It's running two NICs. One of the NICs is on one network, one of the NICs is on another network, and you're able to talk to a whole new subnet of networks. Uh, so it's important to look at where your routing table lies, what connections you have with NetStat and ARP, and yeah. So anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I do want to go into Metasploit really quick and show you some things with payloads, and then we'll go from there. So let's just go into a new new tab here. We'll just say MSF console. Boat it is. Boat it is. All right. So let's repeat a step from last week. So what we did was we found the SMB, so let's try that again, I'm going to type in search SMB, it's going to bring back a lot of stuff. Remember we're looking for SMB version and we could just type that in, that might actually make it easier. Okay, so let's just copy this. Remember again that there's the different types, there's the auxiliary, exploit, post-exploit. Um, so we've been doing auxiliary this entire time. Now we're going to start going into exploitation uh, in terms of modules. So first we'll use this. We'll paste it. And what I like to do 
I like to come in here and I just like to type info, gives you a little bit about it, tells you the basic options. Um, you know, it's just an SMB version detection. It's more important when it comes to exploits to know exactly what you're running, and sometimes they give you a little bit more information on the module itself. So we need an R host. Also, you can just get the basics again from just typing options and not have all that information. So our host, that's the remote host. That's what we're going to try to exploit or talk to at least. So for me, we're going to set the R host 192.168.202.130. And we don't have an SMB pass or SMB user that we need. Because remember from last time, this was just giving up information on a default login. We run it, we see that there is a Samba 2.2.1a type here for SMB, right? So we're going to go and go to Firefox. Again, we're going to say Google. And we'll just paste that, say exploit. And we did have a version in here, I believe. Well, we already know, right? We know it's Red Hat. Uh, I'm wondering if the version came out in the SMB. Sometimes it does. Just Linux 2.4. Let's see, let's see. No, nothing came out there. Okay, but we do know it's, we know it's Red Hat. So there's a couple different ones in here. Um, and you see the name of it is actually under this trans to open. So what we can do is we can come and we can say, just search that, trans to open. So if I put the two in there, that would help. Wow. Okay, and the reason we're seeing so many different ones in this Google search page is because likely, let's see what they've got. Likely these are custom written exploits from exploit DB. And they also have some, you see the rapid seven that ties into Metasploit. So they've got Metasploit module information. Uh, so you're gonna see quite a few. And also on top of that, there's one, two, three, four separate modules for the different types of uh, operating systems. So we know we are running Linux. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. Say use, paste, options. And again, we're going to set the R host. Also, again, good to read info before we fire off. So this exploits the buffer overflow found in Samba versions 2.20 to 2.28. This particular module is capable of exploiting the flaw and x86 Linux systems do not have the no exact, exact option set. So we are meeting these conditions in terms of uh, in terms of version x86 and it's talking about Red Hat older versions. We've confirmed we're on 7.2. So I don't know in terms of older what that means, but I would be comfortable enough trying to fire this. So if we say run. Yeah, you could run uh, shortcuts here. Or you could type exploit because it feels cool. Irgendwo habe ich doch was gerade verloren oder dirt. All right, Control C that. You should be having the same issue. Um, so what's happening is you're getting a session open. That means you're actually talking to the computer, you're exploiting it, something ah, is working in your favor, and then the session dies immediately, which means something's also not working in your favor. Um, my antennas go off right away to something to do with the payload here. And when I mentioned earlier that uh, that was going to be payload related, well, here's where it comes up. So if we go into here, and we type in options again now, you can see something that was not here before. It gives us the payload options. It says, okay, we well cancel that, so maybe something is wrong. And what we can do is we say, oh, okay, I'm running Linux x86 interpreter reverse TCP. Um, we could try to change this into a bind TCP, and there's so many payloads. 
like we could say set payload and we come in here and we say Linux and we know it's x86 because that's what's available for this and we double tap okay so there's a bunch of stuff in here now you saw we were using interpreter reverse TCP um, there is a mm. shell bind, or there is a uh, interpreter bind TCP, right? But we could try to do this if we're dead set on getting a interpreter shell. But uh, but when we we try this, it's not going to work. I'm just saving us a little bit of time here. So this one won't work. We can come through here as well, and we can look at some of the non-stage payloads. Remember, do you see the difference here again when it was coming up? You see the forward slashes, we're talking stage. You see oh, no forward slashes machine. after the shell here. That's stage, this and that's stage, stage. Non-stage payload. So because our stage payloads are not working, we're going to try a non-stage payload, in payload instead. So we can try a Linux one and see if it works. So we'll just say shell reverse TCP. Okay, the helm is im Arsch. Da, um, ich schon options. Plan für. Okay, sometimes they're coming to options because what happens is when you set a new payload, it actually uh, erases everything that's set under the payload before. So it just tells us the command is going to run, the L host, the L port, it all looks fine. Sometimes that erases though. Type in run. We'll see if this works. I honestly haven't tried it with this one. This one works. So I'll show you the one that I tried it with before after this. Okay, so we can say who am I? And we can say first name. So again, we're root. And again, we've exploited. So this is pretty cool. Uh, we got a shell here. There are some cool things that we can do uh, with more advanced shells, interpreter shells, which we're going to get into, uh, you know, next week, uh, possibly the week after, depending on how long it takes us to do the build. You talking about my CTF skills? Hold on. We got a guy in here talking trash. Did you not see my humble brag? Okay. What is this? What is this? This is Black Badge from winning the, the CTF, buddy. Oh yeah, and all my other swag. Oh yeah, doch die Stelle habe ich schon gesehen, das werde ich nie vergessen. Don't tell me to go play some CTFs. I play CTF. Ja, okay. Ja, egal, kann man sich alles nochmal anschauen, ich habe ja alles wieder vergessen. You gotta stay humble. Please. Alright. So, anyway. So we've got this command shell, pretty much the same thing as before. So we've exploited this machine two ways now. We've got uh, one hell of a report to write if we're writing a real report, right? Uh, we've talked about all the other vulnerabilities that we had before. Let me see if I can pull up some of them. We don't even, I didn't even capture all of them because I got tired of just writing it down. And let's see if I have <laughs> the optic. <coughs> Pull this over. Maybe. Oh. Remember, we were going through these one by one. We found there was a default web page. Okay. There was some header disclosure. There was 404 disclosure. Weak ciphers. We got a lot of flaws here if we're going to be writing this report. On top of, of course, the critical vulnerabilities that we've already found and uh, would have to report as well. But if you're finding these vulnerabilities on an assessment, you should be alerting immediately. It should be an immediate stop and alert to whoever the IT manager or project manager is in charge of uh, in charge of things, right? For who you're you're doing a pen test for it. So first exploit, I would have called immediately and said, hey, I just exploited your machine. What do you want me to do? Um, sometimes they say, great, go back, try again, find all the paths you can given the time frame. So that is it for the exploitation. I need a quick drink.
gonna do one more exploit. So we're gonna do one. We're gonna do one boot to root kind of. So let's close out of this junk here. And we're gonna do one together. I'm gonna do something from Hack the Box. And what we're gonna be doing is I don't even remember the name of the machine. Let me see if I can pull up the name of the machine. We're gonna be doing lame. Lame is one of the easier machines. So I'm gonna get connected. If you've got a VIP membership, you can follow along. If you don't, uh, that's okay. You can just kind of watch and soak it in. So I'm gonna CD to my downloads folder, do my open VPN, get connected and stuff. Okay. check that real quick while it's running. Seems down. Feels bad. Could be wrong. Should be right. Ja, den sollte ich heilen, aber nee. Ich habe gerade absolut kein Zeug da. Okay, Level 30. Ich denke, ich entschaut mal kurz den Helm auf Level 30. Boah, hoffentlich ist das was Gutes. Ich kann jetzt nicht schnell wieder hochleveln hier. Ohne Base und alles. Okay, und die Axt wird auch nicht wirklich zu brechen. Be very unlucky, we could just be in the middle of a reset at the moment as well. Because it shows that it's up. Leute. Am I from New Mexico originally? No. Have I lived in New Mexico yet? Okay, so it is up. I'm just gonna hit reset real quick on it. Stück noch 25 noch. Spreading fake news is a bannable offense, Gray. Okay, there's the ping. Let's end map that. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything. Alright, so we're gonna let this run just for a minute. Okay, wir sind schon. Ist mir schon eine Stunde? Wann haben wir angefangen? Ach, 30? Jetzt ist es 9? I don't know. Halbe Stunde? Keine Ahnung. Ja, ich weiß nicht genau, wann ich den Cut setzen soll. Ich kann nicht sehen, wie lange die Folge hier noch dauert. We have played Hacknet, does not mean I enjoyed that game. Humble people do not have time for CTA. Have I done Hack the Box offshore? I have not. That is on my to-do list. So I've got the uh, penetration testing extreme already purchased for eLearn security. I plan on doing that together with offshore <coughs> to kind of tease them in and uh, get some real 
like advanced Active Directory training is. So. Oh, there was no carry, Gray. Stay humble. How do I log my training? Ja, schön hier. What do you mean, how do I log them? On a resume? Aber ich glaube, ich bräuchte eine eine Höhle am besten, wo ich kurz eine eine Base bauen kann. Oh yeah, I take notes. Ja gut, da I war jetzt eine Höhle. Oh man, hey. Ich bin so fertig. Mit der Welt, wie sollen... Ja, egal. Soll ich jetzt eine ganze Base bauen? I don't know. So mit Bett und so. Ja, mal irgendwo schlafen wäre schon eine gute Idee mittlerweile. Like my OSCP, I went through every single chapter, did a sub-chapter and a sub-sub-chapter, all the way through. And then all the exercises, and then all the machines down below, which I won't scroll down to, but you can see about how far I am down this. The more detailed notes, the better you are. Uh, this, this is Keep Note. Some people like Cherry Tree. I like Keep Note because Keep Note is more color friendly to my eyes. I like a white background. I don't do the dark background. I know some people like the dark background. This is dragging now. How would I organize my notes on Offshore or Ross Labs? Just the way you saw it. Pretty much exactly the same way you saw it. So Synac is a private bug bounty program. Uh, let me see if I can bring up get my ugly mug off of the page. Uh, Synac. I like how Bug Crowd comes up first. That's funny. So this is Synac. Basically, it is... Uh, there's the red team. You apply for the red team. And you send a resume. If they like your resume, you have to do a written assessment, a practical assessment, an interview, uh, etc., and a background check, and then you get in. So, uh, it takes a little bit, but there's it's less crowded, so I think it's easier to, to earn money. Anyway, you have to do one for every type of assessment they have. So if you want to work on web apps, you have to do web apps. If you want to work on uh, host assessments, like network, you have to do a host assessment. So there's mobile, there's hardware, there's a bunch of them. I only have host and web apps done. So, um, there's quite a few that I could still still attempt and try to do. Aber mein Movement ist noch echt für den Arsch. Muss man sagen. <lacht> Eigentlich spiele ich dieses Spiel schon viel zu lange dafür, dass mein Movement so scheiße ist. Okay, noch 20 Minuten, ja. Ja, wird halt eine lange Folge. Ich weiß gar nicht, was die Limits sind auf YouTube Upload Times. Ich glaube, es sind gar keine. Wenn man einmal über, über eine Stunde oder eine halbe Stunde hat, 
Comes a few uh, more remember days. we talked last time when SSH is open, and this is on like a pen test, not necessarily just a capture the flag. When when SSH is open, we're going to try to do a brute force attack during a pen test to see if the sim catches us and if they have weak control. Thank you, Ruri. I know that. I appreciate that. Uh, so for 139, 445. What we're doing is we're looking at these and we're saying, okay, can we connect to, to 139.445 and see what the version is? Well, we don't need the version, we got it right here already. Can we connect to it anonymously? Uh, what kind of information can we get out of the folders, etc.? And this 3632, I've actually never seen before uh, doing this machine. So, okay, so when we roll through here, we can take a look at FTP if we want. Uh, so let's just open up a new tab real quick, and I'll take my face off the screen. We'll do a new tab, and we'll just say FTP. Okay, so it says anonymous logins available, so we would say anonymous, anonymous. Okay, successful, pretty much commands, I said ls. Here comes the direct listing, okay. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything there. So we can put things in here if we wanted to. Let's put available. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we uh, put yeah, stuff. Yeah. However, I'll put right over here. Ja, However, nee, für den Rest habe ich Ersatzteile. So if we're doing like a capture the flag and this is for some reason say like a web server, like somehow the FTP lives where the, the web server is and you could put something in there like a reverse shell, maybe that's interesting. Or they put some kind of file in there for you to, to upload, interesting, or download, interesting. But, hmm. um, sorry, trying to read the chat and do both, you guys are crazy. How often are versions reported accurate via Nmap? Pretty often accurate. But anyway, so without a way to target this right now, uh, you know, unless I can get a user to open up an FTP, you know, it's still bad that I can anonymous log in. This is definitely a finding on an assessment. Uh, but unless I can social engineer a user to open up some malware that I put in, it may not be worth my time at the moment, unless I can find a different way to execute that malware. Uh, so we can check out this version of 2.3.4 and see if there's an exploit for it. Okay, so it's got an exploit for backdoor command execution. We'd go in and we'd read that. Looks like a rapid seven, meaning a metasploit module. Module exploits malicious backdoor that was added to the download archive. So if there was, uh, if this is patched, it's not gonna work. And I can tell you right now that it's patched. However, would I be trying this, this exploit? Yes, I would. This is probably one of the first things that I would try. But for the, uh, the sake of saving time here, because we still have another lesson to get into, I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you this one's not it. So, with that out of the way, SSH, I usually don't touch until near the end. Uh, I would Google this open SSH and see if I could find anything. Uh, but I would also look at this SMBD 3.0.20. We can copy that, search it. Say exploit. I'll just take that off Debian to say exploit. Rapid 7's got another one called the username map script. If you guys spoil any Game of Thrones or Endgame for anybody else, you get the ban hammer. That is just the rule. That falls under rule number one of don't be a dick. Also, ich glaube, ich habe schon die ganze 15 Stunden gesehen. Ja, hä? Ja, die Stelle kenne ich auch. 
Mm. Module exploits a command execution vulnerability in SAM version 3.0.20 through 3.0.25 RC3 when using the non-default mm. username at map script configuration option. By specifying a username containing shell meta characters, attackers can execute arbitrary commands. No authentication is needed to exploit this vulnerability since the option is used to map usernames prior to authentication. This is an unauthenticated, unauthenticated RCE, remote code execution. Uh, so, we're gonna try that. Again, this was a username map script. Oh. So we're gonna come oh, into Metasploit. Yeah. We'll open up a new Metasploit. Geht schon wieder los? Ach, komm schon. Ah. Was eine Wolle verschwendung. script right down here. Bye J Delta. We'll copy this again. Yeah. Paste it. Uh, we get info but we already read the info. We'll just say options. We just gotta set an R host. Ich brauch diese Rüstung, wenn die kaputt geht, dann sterbe ich instant. Target automatic, so let's go ahead and try running it. Whether or not it works is a whole nother question. Let's see if we the host is still up. It's not, because it hates us. Yeah, but it's not the I wonder if our reset just went through, or if this box is just incredibly unstable. Yeah, this is plastic. Yeah. This is what you pay for $13 a month. That's what it gets you. So, we'll let this run for a second. If this doesn't work, we're stopping at 9 o'clock. VIP. VIP costs like 13 bucks a month. Uh, how often do Metasploit modules work for me on test? Fairly often if I'm confident about it, but you know, there's some like, like you saw the VS FTP D, right? Uh, I would have been fairly confident that it was working and, or if that would have been an exploit, I would have fired it off and it wouldn't have worked. It didn't have the backdoor version in it. Uh, so you run into situations like that. There's some where you're just like, yeah, I know this is money, it's gonna fire it off, it's gonna work. Um, but sometimes you do have to kind of spray and pray, I guess, uh, to the best of your ability. There we go. All right, run. And we've got a shell. Again, who am I? We are root. Host name. Name. I would cast the Etsy shadow again. Do all those uh, hashes in there. We can arp a if it responds back in an orderly fashion. Apparently, they don't like networking commands today. There it is. We can print the route. If I was a low-level user, sudo-l. Mm. Again, I would look around for important files. So our destination is going out uh, dot zero out of a wildcard gateway. Nothing special there. Uh, we 
could check the net stat if we wanted to. But just some basic, basic enumeration. I would definitely look around all the, the files that I could find and see what's interesting in there. Um, that's really what enumeration is, right? If you're meticulous on the outside, you've got to be just as meticulous on the inside, especially if you're doing capture the flag stuff. Uh, thanks, Ocon, for the, the sub. I appreciate that. Oh, thanks all you guys. Thanks, Immunet. Thanks, Low Kids. Appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Okay. So that is it for exploitation. We are running right on time. Now, if you were on the mailing list, uh, you noticed that I sent out, but we're going to be talking about what do we do in a situation when there is nobody that, or nothing, right, that we can exploit. Uh, let's let's even narrow this down a little bit more because some of you are going to jump right to social engineering. Well, I'll, I'll just call the help desk and tell them I'm so and so. Yeah, that's possible, right? Uh, you can definitely social engineer, but with a lot of these engagements, a lot of pen testing, external network engagements have no social engineering allowed. Uh, there are different sort sort types of assessments for that, sorts of assessments for that, uh, where there are full on engagements that allow social engineering. They're strictly social engineering engagements. So companies like to limit you in scope as much as possible. Humans are the weakest link, and we can still exploit humans being the weakest link, even if everything else holding true uh, is pretty much unexploitable, right? Say this company is up to date on their patching. Uh, they, you know, Maybe you find some small vulnerabilities, but there's nothing that you can get remote code execution on. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Now, if you sat through my CarolinaCon talk already, it's going to be semi-repetitive, um, but only a tiny piece of it is from that CarolinaCon talk. So, uh, somebody asked about the website. I'll pull up the website really quick. Do you want on the mailing list? Thank you, Vita. I appreciate this up. If you come into, oh, there's a more up here. Okay. If you come into more, the contact subscribe, and you come down to here. This isn't the best website. I'm not a good web dev. Uh, but if you come down here and just join the mailing list, you'll get the weekly email. All right. So. Go ahead and talk. Did I draw my logo? No, I didn't. I bought it on Fiverr because I'm cool. If you're not getting the emails, I would try resubscribing. You might have typed in the wrong email. Fiverr is dope. All right, let me get up this PowerPoint presentation since it killed my original one. So we're going to talk about a couple different concepts tonight, and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to be talking about credential stuffing and password spraying are some of the biggest items that we can do when social engineering is not allowed. So let's go ahead and present this from the current slides. So you don't have to go through my whole spiel again. All right. So we're going to start off with credential stuffing, and then we'll talk spiel about is password echten, spraying. Uh, English so what is the well, 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 breached account credentials? The the erste one was German, and I so, hmm. so we've got a compromised server here, right? You see the compromised server? We've got credentials for Joe, Sue, and Bob. These are part of some breach. You can think Equifax, you can think LinkedIn, you can think whatever breach you want. These hashes get taken, people take the hashes, and they take them uh, offline and crack them for you. Sometimes they're nice and they put them on the clear web. Sometimes they put them on the dark web and try to sell them. Uh, so however you obtain this, you can get these clear text passwords. Ah, Joe's up here. We got Joe. God damn it, Joe. Uh, we take these, these clear text passwords, right, and we try to put them against website login. If you're a bad guy, you're putting these credentials, uh, firing them off at random email servers, you're firing them off at banks, you're firing them off wherever you can log in with them, right? If you're a good guy, 
Well, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be staying in scope like the good hacker that you are, and you're going to try to log into a website that uh, is owned by the client. So, and if you're lucky, these credentials will work right away. And that is the benefit of credential stuffing. So, a simple script can go a long way. This is actually version two. We are now in version three. So people have been asking about breach parse. Here's the GitHub for breach parse right here. Uh, so basically this tool, what it does is it searches through a 1.4 billion clear text password list and it spits out what you, uh, what you specify to spit out. So if we go through the script really quick, and it may be hard to read, basically this is the usage up here. If you see it says breach parse, domain to search, file to output. Uh, so if you wanted to search, and we did Tesla last week, we're actually going to do Tesla this week again, we're just going to keep with Tesla. If you say breach parts at tesla.com and then just say tesla.txt, it'll go ahead and output that for you. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to roll through and it's going to create a bunch of files. It's going to create a master.txt, it's going to create mm -hmm. a users.txt and a passwords.txt. Now the master.txt has a, a username colon password. Users is just all the users, passwords is just all the passwords. That way you don't have to do an awk and sort it out. I'm already doing that for you. Uh, so we do a touch of a master file, we total all the files, and we do a file account because we build Ach, a progress das, bar. Boah, ja, aber das habe ich jetzt wirklich schon gesehen. Uh, das ist breach pass. Also ich meine, das habe ich so gesehen, dass ich mich noch voll dran erinnern kann. So ein Ding ist das. Also der hat ja diese geleakten Listen und dann halt ein Skript, was nach Usern sucht und geht damit auf Tesla los äh, und sucht halt dann in diesen, in diesen Listen, äh, in den geleakten Passwortlisten Tesla Domains, also Mails mit at Tesla. Ähm, genau. Und das macht er dann stundenlang. But let's look at the 7100 and see what that render looks like. If this breaks in or something crazy, dude, I, I'm done for the night. <laughs> I'm not trying to break in a test on a live stream. Let's see what the, the raw response is like. Das wäre gar nicht mal so gut, wenn er im Livestream was finden würde, oder? Und dann kann das nicht wirklich äh, disclosen, wenn alle das sehen. Ist es überhaupt legal, live zu äh, pentesten? Nee, oder? Also, es ist locker nicht wirklich legal, live was zu finden, weil das wäre dann halt nicht sehr responsible disclosure, oder? Wie ist denn das? Ah. Let's go to the login page. Oh, we still got the burp intercepted. What we're going to do is we're going to drop that. Okay, so we're going to paste that back in, and then we're going to say, find out what his password was. Password's Fago, 2K, 2K, okay. I've got kind of falling on my super protection. I need something to make these high jumps in my life. There he is. Weil wenn ich jetzt plötzlich an Fallschaden sterbe, das wäre gar nicht so gut. Sign in. We cannot sign you in. So for whatever reason, it was giving us a different response there for a second. We can come back and look at this. I like to sort this by length. Ja, okay, Leute, also die Folge ist jetzt schon ziemlich lang. Ähm, ich würde sagen, jetzt haben wir auch die letzte kurze Folge kompensiert. Ähm, ja, und das war's dann äh, für diese Episode. Sorry, dass ich im Inneren abschneide, aber ich meine, dieser 15-Stunden-Kurs, der wird jetzt. Der wird jetzt sloppy durchgeslidet hier. Ähm, wir haben den ja nicht mal clean angefangen und ich skippe hier durch wie ein, wie ein Crack. Crackskipper. Ähm, ja, genau. Also, äh, das 
ist der Full Ethical Hacking Kurs hochgeladen auf dem Free Co Camp Free Code Camp auf Free Code Camp .org, so heißt der YouTube Channel aber der Kurs selber ist von The Cyber Mentor ähm, genau ist alles gratis online erreichbar und äh, ja, in der Videobeschreibung ist auch immer ein Link natürlich zu dem Video und ja und der Server hier auf dem wir spielen der Minecraft Server ist äh, Laser Gurkenland ein Anarchie Server ohne Regeln äh, deswegen laufe ich hier auch so weit weg ähm, genau der ist geplant sehr sehr lange online zu bleiben und ähm, ich mache regelmäßige Map Updates und eigentlich also hat außer mir hier niemand Zugriff drauf und ähm, ich spiele hier als regulärer User und äh, abuse nicht meine Admin-Rechte für irgendwas. Ähm, genau, also ich bin nicht mal OP hier im Game, also ich verwalte sozusagen meine Server, mache Backups, starte den neu, update den, wenn eine neue Version kommt, solche Sachen. Ähm, genau, sprich, das heißt, ihr habt hier einen, einen Server, äh, der oft leer ist und ähm, wo ihr immer einen Platz finden könnt und dann hier machen, was ihr wollt. Äh, genau, IP ist 149.202.127.134. Ähm, hier nochmal im Chat. Äh, alternativ gibt es auch die Domain sillyhuhn.com. Ähm, ja, das, äh, das war's mit dieser Episode. Der Talk war von CyberMentor Full Ethical Hacking Kurs. Und wir sehen uns in der nächsten Dauerwerbesendung wieder. Tschüss.